This is going to be a quick video to show you how to find out if your compression release is working. This is a customer that came in, Craftsman, it's a Briggs and Stratton engine. Uh, reason it wouldn't start was, well, it's hydro locking because the carburetor's leaking fuel and got the cylinder to crankcase full. So. I promised someone, a viewer, that we would do them a how to see if your camshaft is good and your compression release works. So let's get in here and get it done. First thing we're going to do, well, obviously remove the spark plug. We're going to pop the valve cover loose. Let's get a pad. Not that it's going to make much difference on this nasty machine, but we will. Four bolts. Okay. Now what we're going to look for is movement on our rockers as I spin the engine over. As you spin this engine over, that's your next valve, your exhaust valve, now your intake valve, and we are looking for a bump. Now, what I set these at is four thousandths. And I'm going to grab a feeler gauge. You know, four thousandths. Well, if you can see it. <laughs> anyway, zero, zero, four. Now we're looking for just a little bit of drag in here. That's actually a hair tight. That's a hair tight. We will adjust these, but let's check the exhaust side. That one is actually too tight also. What I'm gonna show you is how to see if your camshaft is bad. The way you see if your camshaft is bad, what we're going to watch is this rocker arm. That valve right now is open. It's coming closed. And there is a bump in there. Okay? Now, just keep going around. I'm spinning the engine by hand. There goes our exhaust valve opening. Watch this valve. What you're looking for is a little tiny bump. A little tiny bump if it does the tiny bump that means your camshaft is okay now see the valve goes open okay now it's going to come back to the top the valve is closed now watch for the bump see the little bump see it see the little bump little bump little bump little bump that means the camshaft is good. Now I'm spinning it around. We're going to open the exhaust again. Okay. Got that valve. Uh, that valve, the exhaust valve is fully open. Now what you want to do is set this at four thousandths. That one is a tad tight. Let's show you how to adjust the valves. Now, these have a set screw in the middle generally a Torx. This is a T20 right here. Now what you do is I'm going to loosen that lock screw. The center screw is a lock. This outer adjustment on this one is a 10 millimeter. Some of them are different sizes. Okay. Now what we'll do is two hands. Here it click. I broke it loose. Now, with this here, what we're going to do is we're going to back this nut off a little bit. And now i got lots of slop, right? Now, we will put our feeler gauge in. See that? Now, what I'm going to do is I'll just do this by hand. You tighten that up a little bit. You feel just a little drag on 
the feeler gauge. Just a little drag. Now, what you'll want to do, I generally leave it hanging there. I'll support this nut and not turn it while my feeler gauge fell out. All right, tighten that down. I'm just holding that still. Now let's see if it's correct or not. Nope, see that's a little loose. It's a little too loose. Pop it back loose. Let's do it again. I'm gonna give it just a little scunch more. Is scunch even a word? Look at there, just a little bit of drag on that. And then all you do is spin the engine over, make this valve open completely, and adjust that side. So that valve is open. Now, they say the intake at four, exhaust at six. I set them both at four. Never had a problem. Pop that loose. We'll back this out a little bit. With that loose, then I'm going to tighten this screw until I've got a drag. Tighten that back. I got a little bit light drag there. Let's do a little more. Beautiful. Done. Put your valve cover back on and you're finished. Thanks for watching, folks. Have a great day.